Good morning, my friend. I hope you're feeling great this morning. I hope you slept well. I hope you've refreshed. God filled you up while you were resting. So the thing on my mind this morning is something, it's, it's one of those things that I'm not often a fan of doing or, the, or the, the area is something I'm not often a fan of because of the way that the responses are there. And that is that, but, it, but it's been on my heart this morning, you know, I've said to you many a times, I spent time with the Lord in the morning and asked him, what are we talking about? And I literally was sitting here this morning going, really God? Uh, okay, fine, let's let's do it. But you write it, you write what, what we need to speak about. And as I've been scrolling some social media, it's, it's, it's a long while coming, you know, you, you stumble upon a, a, a few people and because I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing, I'm very selective of who I follow. I've got my personal account, which I don't mind. I mean, I'm not a you follow me, I follow you person. If uh, I do if, if people do on, on that occasion. But if you're posting stuff that's not even remotely close to anything godly, in my, in my opinion, then chances are slim that I'll be following you because it's not stuff that I want to see, if you understand what I'm saying. So it's not about you follow me, I follow you. And, and I try to be supportive as far and as wide as I can, absolutely. Everybody wants to try and do something. And if I can be a one follower to your 1,000, 5,000, 50,000 mark, I ever the marks work on social medias and stuff these days, because I know a lot of people try and make it out there. But the thing is that, that came across my attention is, you know, people that I see and feel are missing the mark quite a bit. When it comes to them, the, the content that they create and put out there, you know, the Bible says we can't serve God and mammon. And mammon in that context often refers to money, but I think it's definitely broader than that. I feel it's broader than that. God has definitely showed me that it's broader than because God, mammon represents everything that is not of God to me. So if, you know, everything. So on the one post, I'll, you, you'll see somebody that. And a man, they are oh man, and they speak beautifully. They definitely got a God-given talent over there. They are, they are such phenomenal speakers and, and and ambassadors of the word. When you see these posts, and they speak of the Bible, and they speak of God, and they speak how great God is. And then the next day, or or not even the next day, sometimes like a few minutes later, there's a video on you, and they're standing there swearing like a trooper, or they got these words on. You know, people are putting words on the screens all over. You know, and they got these swear words on there, and I'm sitting there going. What the heck are you doing, person? You know, to me, that person looks like a fool. They're making themselves look like a fool. And that's not me judging them. That's just looking from an offer, on, on, from a perspective and a certain, you know, from where I'm looking at. It, it looks silly. But I do feel sorry for that person. Because either it's either they, they don't know what they're doing. It could be that they are trying so hard to bluff themselves in believing that they've changed, yet they haven't really changed it. They haven't hit the mark yet. They haven't let God in yet. They've, they've changed in themselves. And I know this, and I can sit here and tell, talk about this because I've been there myself. I came through a long way of being there. And it's a different ball game when you try and do it yourself because you suck at it. Because we need Jesus for that. We need the Holy Spirit to come and renew our mind for that. And... You know, that's a big problem that we face as children of God because we are in the spotlight all the time, as it is. People look at us and go, oh, look at that guy. Look at that guy. That guy, I saw that guy in church on Sunday. Number one, that's the first problem anyway. Not that these people have any right to judge us by any means anyway. But we should be concerned about what image of God we are there. Yesterday we spoke about that we were created in the image of God and that we are his representatives. So we've got to be mindful of that. When we do our daily doings, you've got to die to yourself. You can't do things your way and try and be obedient to God. You've got to do things His way when you've decided, when you've made up your mind. So when this person sees this stuff going, it's like, yes, he that was in church yesterday. Yes, this so posted that thing on social media yesterday. Yo, look at this guy. My word. Is that what a Christian is like? That's the sort of stuff that we face. And we've got to be careful of this. Now, I'm, saying, I'm not saying we can't make any mistakes. I mentioned it yesterday as well. Of course, we're going to make mistakes. We humans, we do. But I don't post my, all my personal struggles out on social media. I don't. I have an, um, the environment that you're in creates stuff that you struggle with as well, I feel. If, if I, I'm a guy that, I don't know, I have a tendency to, to I, I still struggle to get completely rid of swearing in my life, if I can be openly honest with you. But if I'm in an environment where people swear a lot, then it comes a lot easier. And it's not something I want. 
And that's where, where Romans 12, 2 really makes a difference. You know, so we got these things that we struggle with, but you also, you know, repent only helps if your heart is true, if you really mean it. You can say, yeah, but I really mean it. But you can't mean it if you know in five minutes time you're going to be posting a video out there with swear words plastered all over the screen, with you with swear words coming all out of your mouth. You, that's not, how are you sorry? How does that even mean that you're sorry if you know you're going to do this in, in, in a few minutes time? And it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's confusing me. Maybe I'm not getting it. I don't know. Maybe I just don't get it. But Solomon, in all his, his God-given wisdom, man, he said so many things that if you just really sit and ponder on it, if you just go read it, I mean, you're talking about the wisest oak in the history of mankind that have, that's ever lived. God blessed him with that, that wisdom because that's all he wanted. God came to him. Solomon said, I'll give you anything you want. He said, I want wisdom. I want to be wise. I want to be a slimmiest man. I want to be an intelligent. And, and a few scriptures that he came through is Proverbs 17, verse 27, 28 says, He who has knowledge spares his words. And a man of understanding is, is a calm spirit, is of a calm spirit. Even a fool is counted wise when he holds his peace. When he shuts his lips, he is considered perceptive. So even if you're an idiot and you shut up, you can be seen as intelligence. That's, 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 the, that's the very plain way for me to say that. But, but going through a couple of scriptures in Proverbs, you know, which speaks about what we speak. 11 verse 9 says, Evil words destroy one's friend, where wise discernment rescues the godly. 15 verse 4 says, Gentle words bring life and death, a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. 16.24 says, Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. Proverbs 18.21, and a big one that, that often comes, comes out, is death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. And it is. What you speak is what you'll get. Uh, I, I referenced Bruce Lee's thing also recently about, you know, the body doesn't, not knowing the difference. And it doesn't count only for you. It counts for your, the person standing next to you as well. If you say ugly things about them, if they don't see it and they miss it and they don't come against that, man, that stuff's going to affect their lives in, in ways that we can't even begin to imagine sometimes. So we've got to be careful what, what you do. You've got to be careful what you say. You've got to choose your words wisely. Why do you think they say that in that sentence? Because a wise man... Keeps quiet when he doesn't. And, and we get taught, if you don't have anything good to say, you'd rather shut your mouth. And the reason for that is death and life are in the power of the tongue. If you don't have anything good to say, you're going to be saying these things that could destroy people. That could hurt people. Now, not everybody has, is, is what we call thick-skinned. And, and Because I'm living, moving into a space in my life where if you've got nothing good to say about me, and you say it anyway, it's like... <laughs> In a space in my life where I'm getting rid of that, you know, I, I saw a quick thing of uh, um, an actor yesterday, which the world loves, <clears throat> but he said a, quickly, a quick thing, he said, there's about 7 billion people on the earth, and if you're standing there cussing me out and tuning me, I'm rubbish and saying all these bad things about me, or even in this circumstances, maybe a person that curses and swears a lot and just hurts my ears the whole time, I can choose to go to the other, the rest of the six billion nine hundred and ninety nine million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine other people that aren't like that. That gives me a wise. I can. That's what we should technically do. I'm not saying that the person will will never be again. But if it's not a space for you right now, you move. It's it's simple. It's easy like that. But you know you've got to apply Romans twelve verse two in your life. Where the Holy Spirit needs to come in and transform you. He needs to renew your mind. And you're going to start thinking differently about things. You're not going to want to do these things anymore. That's where the difference comes in. You're not going to want to do it that way anymore. And if you really, if, if you are posting, maybe you're posting about your business stuff or whatever. If, if you're posting about your business stuff and swearing a lot, that doesn't, I'm, I don't want to do business with you anyway. But if you understand my point is, is you'll find a godly way to do it. Because if God's in charge of your life, you just do the best that you can do. God will do the rest. If you don't see the, the results immediately, God's timing is perfect. We know this. God doesn't pluck, a, pluck a, a, a flower before it is ready. He doesn't pick a fruit before it's ready. He sees you under that fig tree where you are sitting. Iron sharpens iron, Solomon says again in Proverbs. And if iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens the countenance of his friend. And countenance, yeah, I've said before, means your face or your facial expression. So when I'm helping you, I'm literally helping you save face. So let's help each other, remind each other, and be real, but do it with wisdom. Come on, man.